on. Do you want to talk? Still vaporware. <laughs> yeah, we can talk Elden Ring. I mean, there, there's not much here. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and read this. Uh, footage of From Software's hotly anticipated Elden Ring recently leaked with an internal internal month. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's nope. English is good. Never mind. An internal month old trailer making the rounds on the internet. Uh, while only a five second snippet, the leaked footage confirms the return no, of Sekiro's jump that? mechanics as well as horse mounted combat. Uh, the fervor surrounding Elden Ring. That, my friend. The, the main one that was floating around was the five second uh, one. Uh, there's, um, there, there's like a two minute and 30 second one going around. <laughs> Uh, the fervor surrounding Elden Ring is at an all-time high, with fans constantly mystified on Twitter as to why there hasn't been any updates on the game. Uh, despite the fact that COVID has slowed down development worldwide, and that Sekiro... I, I, I want to reiterate this fucking point, because I keep saying it on Twitter. Sekiro came out not even two fucking years ago. Keep your... It, just just wait. It was. It has not even been two years. Have some goddamn patience. Yeah, well, we I, that's the thing. That's the thing that I had a separate team working on it. Right, but I still think that's the thing that people people are have, especially in the pandemic times right now, is like patience is at an all time low because and people are so freaking entitled when it comes to video games because they literally, as soon as it's announced, they're like, okay, uh, I want that now. I want it right now. Like, if you're going to announce it, you should be ready to release it. Like, I want it right now. Don't don't show because I, I see where they're I see where they're coming from. One of my friends, one of my friends kind of described it to me as like he likes forgetting about games that are announced for a lot as long as he possibly can so that he can wait until the release date. And then he gets excited when it's about to come out. Um and I get that because that's part of like not being disappointed and not raising your expectations too high. Um, so I think I think video game companies could take a note maybe from that. Like we do, we do need to be more patient. I will say that much. But I think I video mean, game companies need to be a bit a bit more decisive on when they announce their games. I mean, when did they announce it? It was like two uh, years ago. So, wait, hold on. So I swear I read something. And I'm not defending the people who being like, release it now. But like, I swear, I, I remember reading something where Miyazaki's been on record saying that they had a team doing Sekiro and a team doing Elden Ring. I swear to God, he's been on record. Saying I'm, I'm pretty confident they do have two teams because what was it? Bloodborne came out 2015 and the Dark Souls 3 was like 2015 or 16. But they they have two studios working uh, concurrently on different titles. Yeah. So like so like I swear that they had most of that team working on Sekiro, then part of it working on El Elden Ring. Then when Sekiro launched, they had a team doing post game content. Then the rest moved moved on. So like I can maybe see it releasing at the end of this year, early next year at the like. Man, I, I haven't. I mean, oh, oh, here's another thing. I know, I know, from software had nothing to do with a Demon Souls remake, but we literally got a fucking Souls game last year you have souls to play people need to chill jesus christ they're fucking um, nuts and i say that in the most loving way possible but i don't <laughs> like it's like they literally as soon as they get a whiff as soon as someone says oh hi as soon as as soon as someone fucking says the word elven people literally tackle you they're like where is it is it where is it, where is it, where is it? it's like no it's like calm down you literally got a fucking taped trailer that was taped on like a playstation 2 camera <laughs> they might have some more um they might have some I, more patience if they were doctors haha -ha, you've said that like five times I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh no i was gonna say that i just i i i Maybe I'm not the only one in this conversation that remembers this, but I remember and I'm going to sound old right now, but I remember I remember a time when uh, p game new video games would get announced very close to their release date. So Bethesda pre 2018. <laughs> Basically, like basically when the Internet was still young and like video game reporting was like less less like rumor mill and more like substantiated interviews and facts and and stuff and like gaming magazines and stuff like that you you were actually able to wait and be pleasantly surprised by a new release 
and you didn't have to wait that long because guess what they had already been working on it for three four five some odd years and then they announced it like a month or so before it was supposed to come out and then the, for that whole month it was just advertising 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 nowadays we got freaking data miners. We got people trying to leak shit. We got the rumor mill working 24 seven. And it's just like, you cannot forget about a game for one damn minute these days. I think there's three points I want to pause it and then we can jump off on them. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I think your friend has the best grasp of this. And I, th I would like to think this is generally how I approach it. Just like, just play it when it comes out. Like, like I, I'll, I'll maybe get hyped like maybe the week before it comes out, but just don't stress out over things coming out like that. Yeah. Uh, two. Um, shit, I forgot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stall for time while I think about it. Just gonna say random oh, words. Oh, 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 <laughs> okay. I'll say this. I'll say this. The first, the first, when, when there was the like a month ago, right? When, when they did the Resident Evil Village showcase, I was literally hyped for Resident Evil Village for an entire week. And I, the, when I pre-ordered it, when they announced the pre-orders yeah. and I pre-ordered it, I was like, okay, I want it now. Like, I pre-ordered it. It's in my cart. I want it right now. Why can't it already be May? Give mm -hmm. it to me. And I was like, I was like, I felt this intense anxiety and this frustration that I just couldn't have the game now. And I had to stop myself and be like, why do I feel this way? Why am I feeling so <laughs> freaking entitled? Like, chill out. Like, it's fine. You pre-ordered it. It's coming to your house. It's going to be here around your birthday, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be fine. So now I'm fine. Now I, like, forget about it. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. I, I, think, I'm I think I'm basically saying just like, yeah, excited for it. The week of, I'm going to be hyped. Oh, but uh, the, be thing hyped. I, the, the, the thing I forgot oh. that um, Bethesda um specifically for fallout 4 like they announced it like i th i think like just yeah, a couple a handful of months, four months. Four yeah months after they announced it they're like hey here's fallout 4 here's a fuck to the gameplay it comes out in four in four months like right. i say say what you want about but but that's not and i will but like i will at least give them credit when they used to do that because that was kick-ass like that was like Oh, I'm not personally excited for this, but I know friends who are freaking out. Now they only have to wait four or a month, and that's great. Like, I think even on the opposite end of the aisle, like the video games industry is so fucking secretive about what they're working on compared to yeah. uh, the film industry. Um, like, the film industry doesn't give a fuck if if someone knows that they're like even casually thinking of shopping something. You're just like, I don't know. We might. We we thought about like this Friday the Thirteenth idea. We had this person writing it. We had this studio looking at it. Here's They're some so locations. They They're just don't so give a shit. Transparent about that stuff. They're so transparent. It and it's like the one thing I'll say about this whole Elden Ring shit is this was is this is one hundred percent the fan the 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 fan base's fault. This is one hundred percent them literally putting this on the highest of highest pedestals. And being like, this is going to be the greatest thing that's ever created. When literally, if you watch that full, two, I think it's like two minute, 20 second trailer that was taped on a fucking flip flip phone. All the animations are taken from from Dark Souls. All of them. Like nothing is new. The only new animation. I mean, it's so still early in development. Yeah, but it's like if they're really going to do that and just make it just a Souls game and slap George R. R. Martin's name on it. Like, I fully believe the dumb theory that that this is just this is this is the last Game of Thrones book. The game is going to end. It's going to be the last Game of Thrones book. Like, it's I think um, I think Roman Nomad in chat uh, nailed it, too. It's just like fanatical uh, stand culture. It's bad and it just leads to toxicity. And like, if you want if you want to point to like any com community and and gaming and in general souls community is so fucking toxic like what what was it we did the one little segment where i said like yeah they sh there should be difficulty options it, has, it doesn't impact the way i want to play and what it got like a freaking week's worth of fucking shitheads coming after me for that so that was well, because fun. it's like it's gatekeeping that's all it is it's like it's gatekeeping like oh no you gotta you're you just need to get good it's the whole get good meme you know coming to fruition and coming to life uh on the internet um, when it's like, you know, how about, how about turn it around on them and get fucked? How about that? Mm -hmm. Uh, because Ooh. people have freaking, people are not always fully able like, like you are, you know, other people have disabilities and maybe want to enjoy uh, a souls game without, you know, 
getting completely squashed by the first enemy they came across. I don't think uh, I don't think you were on the episode, Corey. But um, I don't think you were on the episode when we were going a bit more in depth with the uh, like difficulty options or whatever. But like even for Souls games, like I will I will stand by the stance that there should be difficulty options for however people want to play. But I'll always still like recommend to someone and I and uh, Jedi Fallen Order does a pretty good description of just like, hey, play whatever difficulty you want. We don't give a fuck. Uh, we think you should like leave a, a certain level of, like difficulty for yourself. But otherwise, go do whatever fuck you want. Yeah, I think like I was um I was just playing the the final demo of the System Shock re, re remake and the difficulty for that because I don't think the original had dif difficulties and those games are notoriously hard. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty option that it had, it wasn't really a difficulty option. You had like four different aspects of 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 the game: hacking, um, cameras, combat, and something else. I think it was health, and it and it and it went one through three. One making it the least hardest, three making it hard, and you could switch and mix and match all all of them. So if you wanted to play the game on all ones and make it just experience for like the story, you could. If you wanted to make it impossible and put it all on three, you could 100% do that too. Mm -hmm. And I think like even if you don't put a difficulty option in your in your game, doing something like that, which allows us to switch the difficulty for how much we want it to be, and and allow us to change that mid game if we think it's too easy or if it's too too hard, right? It's so important. And I think Souls, because so I want Souls to have a difficulty difficulty option, yes. But I think if we did Souls more like how the System Shock remake did it. And did it like, oh, uh, how do you want yourself to level up? Do you want to do the easiest way possible or the hardest? How do you want enemies to hit? How do yeah. you want your health and to go? Like a lot of a lot of games already do this in the sense that like they they put little descriptions for every difficulty. And you literally didn't you wouldn't even need to like you would just need to add an easier difficulty. That's literally it. You basically like an assisted mode, if you will. So it's like and so you just put normal or whatever and it just says uh maybe like as the game was made to be played and that's just the normal game mode and then um you have like assisted mode right above that where it's like for those players that just want to focus on story that's it that's literally all it takes it's and not you know dropped drop the ball on not putting that in there Right. And their dumb excuse of, oh, we wanted to keep it as close to the original as possible. Like, that's not an excuse. You well, even even as even as Nexus pointed out, uh, Nexus, who's who's super diehard into Demon Souls, like she pointed out, like they took creative liberties with the remake where they changed character designs. So that argument doesn't fucking yeah. hold any water. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just it's dumb. They could have done that. They could have broken the broken the trail and put in difficulty options or at least accessibility features like come on like games right. nowadays have accessibility features just like maybe play. maybe like it could have been as easy as starting the player off at like level 20 instead of zero like a handicap i mean, I mean even even so much of this stuff is it's like damage modifiers just like go into the code or whatever it's, it's probably a bit more complicated than we're making it out to be just like instead of the enemies doing doing 100 percent damage put it to like 20 percent it's you right. don't have to like fundamentally control change the way the game plays fucking, fucking did it. control did it with their with their accessibility options see the issue with, and i know you have your you, you have your own issues with control but like my specific issue with the way they word yeah. their assisted just like we believe our game is best with a challenge well, yeah. control is not well, yeah. control is not a game that benefits from being difficult it's not it, like, it's not, it doesn't have like the soul's ethos behind it if anything the difficulty well, gets in the way well like also they like why why you're like digging the code like you can in, in hack it, man. you can change hack and do it you can change the percentage of your like powers coming back of you regaining health like you can do that they've shown that you can go into game files and do that and i feel like blue point could have easily done that like they could have like allowed you to change the percentage it's, it's, stuff the, the fact of the matter the, the fact of the matter is is that there's no excuse they could have given that would um make it okay to just omit that that uh thing i think that i think what it was is they they just wanted to remove themselves completely from the controversy, so they just gave some sort of bullshit excuse. 
you know. Oh, also, the whole the whole the whole point of this conversation is that Elden Ring is, is a vaporware. It is one of those movies that everyone claims that they saw as a kid, even though it doesn't it doesn't exist. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far in this case. We all just willed Elden Ring into existence. <laughs> <laughs> people people were like man wouldn't it be great if from software and george r, r. martin teamed up and then the collective internet consciousness just oh speaking over. speaking of soul games uh freaking um what is it what is it called uh the re re not resurgence re, re the right. one where you're the girl in like the space suit and you're in like some crazy alien oh, world shit um Returnal yeah. looks pretty good. Yeah. Returnal. Yeah, that one's good. more of like a that one's more of a of like a a roguelike hell. roguelike bullet hell. Yeah, it feels kind of like but it, but Dark Souls it, it meets whole... Dead Space in a way. Yeah, like Oh, dude, Callisto yeah. Protocol. Hell yeah. Dude, I'm so excited oh, for Callisto <laughs> Protocol. Oh my god. I'm going to pee my pants. <laughs> I I literally am. <laughs> I've been holding it in. We're probably not going to see it for like another two or three years, but I don't care. <laughs> y'all know that that's a PUBG game, right? <laughs> it, apparently, like it's so within the PUBG universe, like motherfucker, it's in sp- it's in space. Like this has nothing to do with Earth. Like the fuck is the PUBG I, universe? I, I didn't it, know PUBG had a war. That, that doesn't hold like any water to me whatsoever. Like, it might be like a cute little nod. Is that a fact? Is that a fact or is yes. that like apparently? It's so yeah, stupid because I don't understand. They're a, they're a their team working under the uh the player unknown team so like they're like they're like an indie studio but they're working under the player unknown battlegrounds team oh uh, okay well they're probably it's probably just some easter eggs i don't think yeah. it's gonna be like i, I don't think influenced. like like there's no story to fucking PUBG. it's literally just multiplayer there yeah it literally is. To it. it's just like you're an army guy so go weird. shoot people it's like so that's weird. literally all it is it's so weird 